the chemical quantities and aqueous reactions. Sorry about that. Morning glitch of the PowerPoint. Um, so the greenhouse effect, right? We've heard of this. Um, the greenhouse effect is what keeps our planet warm. It's actually very cold in space, but our planet is warm, sometimes maybe warmer than we'd like. Um, greenhouse gases are in the atmosphere. Um, sunlight passes through the atmosphere, um, not all of the sunlight, but most of the sunlight. And then it, when it strikes the Earth, it heats the surface. And then the greenhouse gases um, sort of act as a blanket and keep that heat from escaping. And so we have this balance between incoming energy from the sun and outgoing energy getting through the greenhouse gases that determines the Earth's average temperature. So, you know, if you mess the balance up, then you're going to change the average temperature of the Earth, and that can have catastrophic consequences, right? So currently we're, we're concerned about the Earth getting warmer, but the Earth getting colder is a problem too because that can send you into an ice age, which would also be devastating. So scientists have measured um, average temperatures since... Um, since 1860, they've noted an average uh, 0.7 degrees Celsius rise in the average temperature. They've also noted that atmospheric carbon dioxide levels have risen by 38%. So the question is, are these two trends causal? Does one of these trends, has one of these trends caused the other one? And the current thinking, you know, is that the CO2 levels rising are what is causing the, um, the increase in the global temperature because more greenhouse gases, more heat being retained. And here's uh, the graph of carbon dioxide and the graph for global temperature. Now the thing is, um, with data, you have to be very careful how you interpret data. Um, statistics can manipulate data and you you know, if you've got a bias going into it, you can come up with an entirely wrong conclusion. I personally have not decided whether I believe that we are experiencing significant global warming or not. I don't have the time to, to investigate it thoroughly, so I'm just like, well, I'm not sure. The thing is, um, you know, we see this trend here. If we showed the trend from here to here, it would be even more alarming. But what about the years before? Um, you know, the, the Earth has been around for a long time, and we do know that there are certain long cycles that occur. And so it is possible that this is just a normal long cycle of slight warming, and then it'll cool down again later. We don't know. Does that mean we should be, you know, just not care about the environment at all? Absolutely not. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying any time that we have data to, um, and especially when the interpretation of the data can have significant um, economic uh, consequences, you need to be a little bit careful. So how could we investigate um, the relationship here? Well, where's the CO2 coming from? One source is combustion of fossil fuels. So most of you probably came to work or came to school in a gas-powered vehicle today, right? The combustion of gas gives off CO2. <coughs> so this is an example reaction, octane reacting with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. Another source of CO2 is volcanic action. So volcanoes, even when they're not erupting, are going to be um, shooting out some carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So we can actually use some ideas in chemistry to get an idea of whether this global warming, specifically though, whether this increase in carbon dioxide is due to natural causes like volcanic activity or due to our use of fossil fuels. So this is kind of a long introduction into how is what I'm going to teach you useful in real life. <coughs> 